Welcome to Tech Notice, my friends. On 5th of November, AMD released the 5000 series processors and now you're able to buy them. 5th of November is also the firework and bonfire night here in the UK and that just fits so well with all the benchmarks that have been released about the 5000 series processors. Previously, Intel was the lead in gaming and that era has come to an end. AMD has taken a leap forward and quite a bit. But, 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 what about the creative people and the creative applications and professional workflow? How do these processes work on these programs? And this is exactly what we're talking about. There's great news for the gamers, but is there great news for the creative people as well who use these processes maybe for the professional workflow? But before we're gonna go into that more, let me tell you about another great thing, honey. So before you get all mad with me and stop typing the comment that this guy didn't even have the processes, I don't have the processes, okay? Because I'm a small YouTuber and this is just how it works. I'm gonna have to find another way how to talk to you about these processes because, you know, the big companies and the big YouTubers, they get the deals and they get the processes before they're released. But what I am able to do is look at the benchmarks and give you a good conclusion of how do these processes work on creative applications. So the next part of the video, we're gonna look at 11 different programs in the creative field and how do these processes exactly perform in those applications. So if you're specifically interested in certain application or program, then just hover over these YouTube chatters and find your perfect one or your favorite one and then you know you can just skip into that one but we're just gonna start going one by one and short conclusion about how these processes perform in these programs first of all Adobe Photoshop. In the past, in Photoshop, there were arguments for both sides, Intel, whether you're using Intel or AMD. But now, since the 5000 processor releases, there is no real reason to recommend Intel because AMD takes such a big leap forward in the benchmarks. A thing to note over here is that Photoshop doesn't scale well with the more cores. So when you get more cores, it doesn't necessarily give you a better performance, whereas the high clocks on the performance or more single threaded performances are what Adobe is after on Photoshop program. For that reason, even the six core 5600X is faster than the Intel 10 and 900K and there is no real reason to go anything more than 5800X processor, which is an eight core 16 thread processor. The 5900X, the 12 core and 5950X 16 core, they're basically performing exactly the same as the 5800X processor. In terms of performance gain over Intel, then all of these processors, 5800X, 5900X and 5950X processors have more than 10% gain on the performance over Intel 10900K. And even the more budget or cheaper option of 5600X is faster than the Intel 10900K. And if you look at the similarly priced Intel processor 10600K, then the AMD 5600X performs around 22% better than the similarly priced Intel 10600K. Let's move on to Lightroom Classic. Now, by the way, if you're at this point of the video and wondering how does AMD perform over the rest of the things, then a quick little spoiler for you is that AMD is going to be on top on all of these programs. So previously when you wanted to optimize for the active tasks in Lightroom Classic, then there was kind of reasons to go with Intel because like scrolling and things like that were faster on the Intel processors, but not anymore. AMD takes a solid lead again on Lightroom Classic, and no matter the task. The 8 core 5800X beats Intel 10900K by a solid 14%, whereas the AMD 5900X beats Intel by a solid 21%. Now in terms of the overall performance and what's the absolute best in Lightroom, then we see that the Threadripper processors are still the best in Lightroom tasks, but with similarly priced Intel versus AMD processors and the Ryzen 5 and 7 processors, we can see that Ryzen is a better choice for Lightroom Classic. And even the cheaper options, Ryzen 5 5600X outperforms the similarly priced Intel 10600K by a solid 10 to 11%. So let's move on to video editing. Previously, the Intel 10th 
series processors and the Ryzen 3000 series processors were performing very equally in the Adobe After Effects application. But now, since the 5000 series, this is not the case anymore again. AMD takes a big leap forward in terms of the performance over the Intel's 10th gen processors. So looking at the lower end first, the Intel Core i5 10600K and the Ryzen 5 5600X, we can see that the AMD is a solid 16% faster. At the higher end, 5800X, 5900X and 5950X processors range from 9 to 18% faster than the Intel 10900K. Now, if you're looking at the chart and looking at the ultimately best performance in Adobe After Effects, then we can see that the 16 core 5950X processor is the best processor you can get for Adobe After Effects. As you can see, it even outperforms some of the Threadripper processors down there, which are 24 core and 32 core, which is very, very interesting. Another interesting note to note over here is that the new 8 core 5800X processor performs better than the previous third gen 16 core 3950X. Adobe Premiere Pro, probably the most popular video editing program in the world at this point. Now, there's a very important thing to note over here. Previously, Intel was kind of the process to go for Adobe Premiere Pro because of Intel's QuickSync, which is an integrated graphics built into the processor, was able to decode and encode the H.264 and H.265 codecs when editing or exporting the footage. Now, since the Premiere Pro 14.6, if I'm not mistaken, release, the GPU now is able to decode and encode these types of footages. I'm talking about H.264 and H.265 codecs, which means that the QuickSync feature does not give you any leap of performance when going with Intel over AMD anymore because the dedicated GPU can do that task for you. So looking at these benchmarks now, the AMD is performing much better than Intel. As you can see, the top of the chart is all red and it does outperform similarly priced Intel processors by 12 to 20%. And that is not just the uh, 10th series K processors. It is also including the X and XE processors. That is the 10980 XE processor, which is a 16, 16 core processor. And we can see that AMD Ryzen 9 5900X 12 core processor is outperforming this 18 core processor on the Intel side. Now, if you're looking at overall performance and what is the absolutely best processor in this program at this point in time, then the Threadripper processors are still the ones to go because Premiere Pro can utilize the multi-threaded performance from the CPU. Now that is the top of the chart. When you go a little bit lower, which we're gonna reach to the eight core 5800X processor, then at that point, there is a slight lead actually over Intel because the 10900K is only about 1% slower over AMD, but because of the QuickSync feature, it is very, very beneficial to use that because it gives you a better playback speed and it releases you to use the GPU or dedicate the GPU for some other effects or some other tasks. But the story is the same that even on the very low end, 5600X, which is our six core processor from the AMD side, is outperforming our 10600K from Intel, which is another 16, six core and core to core, we're getting better performance from AMD as well as sometimes the lower price. DaVinci Resolve, another very, very popular program in the video editing world. Now, AMD processors were already a good choice going over Intel because the AMD processors uh, or the third gen processors had PCIe Gen 4 and the multi-threaded performance on these AMD processors were, was very good, which DaVinci Resolve can utilize a lot. So AMD was already on top. But now, interestingly enough, the 5000 series processors aren't that much better than the third gen Ryzen or 3000 series Ryzen processors in this particular program. But regardless, 
it just extends the lead even more over Intel. So looking at the bottom end, we can see that the Ryzen 5 5600X beats the Intel i5 10600K by roughly around 14%. Now moving a step up, the Ryzen 7 5800X beats the Intel Core i9 10900K by roughly about 5%. Going even higher, the AMD Ryzen 9 processors, that is the 5900X and 5950X processors, do even better, beating the Intel Core i9 10900X and the 10940X processors by 29 and 22% respectively, which means that the AMD processors are about five to 29% better than Intel processors at the similar price point and similar core counts. But making a note at the top of the stack over there is still the Threadripper processors over here, which can take the lead even over the 5000 series Ryzen processors. Unreal Engine. Now AMD Ryzen third gen was already a good choice or a good suggestion when going with this program. Since the 5000 release of Ryzen processors, it's hard to recommend anything else but that. Ryzen 5000 series processors offer from 10 to 20% better performance over Intel processors that have been priced similarly or at the similar core count. Nevertheless, on top of the charts is still the Threadripper processors with large core counts and multi-threaded performance absolutely smashing it through the roof. But if you're looking something a bit less priced than the Threadripper system, because that is completely a different price point, then the AMD 5000 series is cheaper and better option for most of the people out there. Cinema 4D, the single threaded performance in this application is absolutely amazing on the new 5000 series processors. So whether you're doing modeling, animation or physics in the Cinema 4D, you're gonna absolutely love the new AMD processors because the single thread performance is absolutely the best in the world that any processor can offer. But in terms of pure rendering performance, there is nothing that Intel's Core or Core X processors can offer that comes even close to the Threadripper processors. Obviously, Threadripper is much expensive than some of the Intel's Core or Core X processors, but even at looking at some of the lower price AMD's 5000 series processors, we're getting much better performance over Intel. And again, knowing these performance benchmarks, it's really hard to recommend anything but AMD 5000 series processors or Threadripper processors or even third gen AMD processors over Intel processors. Next up, V-Ray CPU rendering. Now, again, the single threaded performance and speeds are absolutely amazing. For the price and performance, the new 5000 series offer you absolutely amazing performance to value, as well as providing you one of the best single threaded performance or speeds when doing modeling, animation, or other related tasks. The interesting thing is that the 5000 series family is about 10 to 20% faster than the V-Ray Next over the previous third gen processors, which is a big leap forward. Regardless, the absolutely top of the chart over there are still the Threadripper processors. But obviously this is what we're looking only at the CPU rendering workload, not the GPU. And it's worth considering whether you need a GPU rendering there as well, and maybe, you know, splitting some of the workload onto the GPU or things like that. Reality capture. And this is where things get even more interesting because the Ryzen 9 5950X is the fastest processor tested in the reality capture application provided by the Puget Bench. Now the 5900X and 5800X are closely behind and all three of these processors outperform even the Threadripper processors. So the new 5000 series offer you a perfect core count as well as perfect per core performance for these applications. The only thing to watch out is there is if you need more than 128 gigabytes of RAM, which maxes out on the Ryzen 5000 and 3000 series processors, then it's maybe worth considering the Threadripper processors or Threadripper platform, which offers you double that capacity. But it's just interesting to see how much AMD is pulling forward and ahead of Intel on another program. Moving forward to Agisoft Metashape. In summary, the Ryzen 7 
100X is the fastest processor Puget Bench has tested in that application when working with maps. The Ryzen 9 5950X and 5900X are slightly faster when dealing with more complex models rather than maps. And the only similarly performing CPU from the Intel side is the 10900K. For the price and performance, I don't see why you should go with the 10900K over the 5800X. Now, a similar thing to bear in mind over here is that the Ryzen processors, apart from the Threadripper processors, are limited to 128 gigabytes of RAM. So if that is an issue for you, then maybe worth going with Intel 10900K and more RAM if that is needed. But just make sure you know that this is what you really need instead of the pure raw performance that you can get over at AMD side. And last program we're looking at is the PIX4D. In this application, again, we see that the AMD Ryzen 9 5950X is undeniably the fastest processor for this particular application. The lower 12 core processor Ryzen 9 5900X is a very good contender as well. But looking at the lower end, even the Ryzen 7 and 5 processors on the 5000 series are outperforming Intel processors for the similar price point and similar core counts, which is fantastic. So we know that AMD is outperforming Intel, but AMD 5000 series is outperforming AMD's third gen Ryzen's by roughly about 15% for the similar core counts and going up and up. But the interesting point is that on the very top of the chart is not Threadripper processors, but the new Ryzen 9 59 50X processor. And similarly again over here, the only weakness with the Ryzen processors over the Threadripper processors is that their maximum RAM is 128 gigabytes. Now, if you do need the bigger RAM or more RAM on your application or your workflow, then it's probably worth still going with the Threadripper processors that are not much lower than the Ryzen 9 5950X, but can offer you 256 gigabytes of RAM. So in conclusion, overall, we can see that the new Ryzen 5000 processors are from five to sometimes even 39% better, which is close to 40% better than the, the Intel processors, which just blows the mind. And the Intel and AMD scale has completely flipped whichever way you wanna look at it. So now if you're interested to know like what is the best bank for buck processor, in these different programs or things then comment below and subscribe to the channel because this is what we're doing over here. Like mentioned, the AMD 5000 series processors are better in the performance, but not necessarily always the best bang for your buck. So if you wanna know that, subscribe and make sure you don't miss those videos which are coming out soon. But hopefully this video explained to you how good these processors are and what can you expect in these applications over Intel processors and maybe help you decide for your future platform whether you're going AMD or Intel. If you did enjoy this video, hit that like button. It actually makes a difference. Now I have a question for you. Was this something you expected AMD was going to do or was this a surprise to you? Comment below. I'd love to see your comments or your opinion in the comment section below. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.